Hi everybody, welcome back. I'm wearing my Mariners cap and shirt today because I'm going to read you a book about baseball. It's called A Ticket to the Pennant, A Tale of Baseball in Seattle by Mark Holton, illustrated by John Skews. Huey had his glove, his lucky shirt, and his cap. He was all ready for the big game. Now he just needed his Rainiers to win, and he needed his ticket. Today was the deciding game of the series between the Seattle Rainiers and the Los Angeles Angels, but Huey couldn't find his ticket. He had searched everywhere. Where could it be? He had it yesterday when he went shopping with his mother. He would have to retrace his steps on the way to the stadium. The game started in 20 minutes. He ran out of the house. His next door neighbor sat listening to the radio. Mr. Barnett, have you seen my ticket? Huey asked. Nope, you lost it? Huey nodded his head yes. Well, you're welcome to listen on the porch with us, Huey. Announcer Leo Lassen's nasal voice came over the radio. The Rainiers and the Angels are here at Six Stadium in Seattle, baseball fans. The Suds and Halos have taken batting practice. Pitchers are warming up. It's been a tight race for the pennant. Lassen continued to warm up the fans. Stevens is on the hot corner. Balsina is patrolling center. Mount Rainier is a big ice cream cone over Franklin High tonight, folks. Lemonade, Huey? Mrs. Barnett asked. Their porch was tempting. No thanks, Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Barnett. I gotta find my ticket. Huey ran down Dearborn to Rainier Avenue and turned left. Bus number seven rolled by. As he scanned the ground for his ticket, the smell of Italian cooking almost distracted him. Mmm, meatballs or ravioli? Huey thought he could hear the murmur of the stadium 12 blocks away. Near the I-90 bridge, he heard Leo from a car radio. Kretlow's off to a shaky start. Two angels aboard. Huey's gut tightened. After two more blocks, he neared Borcini's, Borcini's Bakery, where he and his mother had stopped yesterday for bread. Maybe he left his ticket here. Hi, Huey. Can you fetch me the tomatoes from the truck? Remo is more interested in the game, said Mrs. Borkini, the baker's wife, rolling her eyes, like everyone else. Huey groaned. He needed to find that ticket, but he wanted to be a good neighbor. Sure, Mrs. B, he said, and dashed outside. When he came in, he heard Leo again. Another fastball for strike three, and up come the rain ears. Huey needed the game to go slower. Already the bottom of the inning, he had to hurry. Did you find a ticket lying around, Mrs. Borkini? I lost mine. Oh, goodness, no, Huey. I'm so sorry. Good luck. Thank you for your help. Huey paused in the doorway to listen. Hutch has all right-handers in the lineup tonight to face Joe Hatton, the Halo Southpaw. Baseball steps up. Anytime, Mrs. B, and Huey raced down Rainier Avenue. The street was quiet. Huey overheard Leo's voice through the window of an apartment building. Bascal took third on a wild pitch after his double to left. Now Rigetti's up. You can't say Rigetti's had a hot bat this year, but let's see if he can bring Bascal home. Huey sprinted to Mutual Fish next. Had he left his ticket near the crab tank yesterday while his mother chose the trout? The bell over the door rang as he zipped in. The crowd at the stadium, just two blocks away, roared. It was so loud Huey could hear it even after the door closed. Why aren't you at the game, Huey? asked Mr. Yoshimura. And how was the fish last night? It was good, thanks, Huey said, but I can't find my ticket. Have you seen it? From behind the counter, Lassen's voice echoed from the shop radio. Rigetti punches a single to left. Bascal comes across the plate. Rainier score! Mr. Yoshimura hadn't seen the ticket and was closing up early. The rest of the fishmongers were already at the game. After a quick goodbye, Huey ran on toward the stadium. A block away, he had realized he had forgotten his glove at the fish store and had to race back to get it. Huey burst onto the street. He could see Mount Rainier on the horizon. Off to the left loomed Six Stadium, tall and gleaming against the green hills of, Mount ba of the Mount Baker neighborhood. 
The stands came into view. Cars filled the parking lot and fans filled the wooden bleachers. Cheapskate Hill outside left field, where those who didn't or couldn't pay watched the game from the Vaca family farm, was full too. Huey zoomed past the house where Kenneth from his baseball team lived. He saw the barrel burger joint. It would be packed after the game with Rainier's fans and maybe even some players. A radio sat on a stack of crates at Pree's garden patch. A small crowd gathered around. Balsina is up to bat. The Filipino fl fly chaser looks good tonight, folks. They could use his speed on the bases. Balsina was Huey's favorite, a great hitter and fast too. Huey even got his autograph at the barrel once. But how could it already be the bottom of the second? Huey ran faster. He veered into a group standing along the wall in the parking lot. He saw his classmate Jane, who sometimes got in if she returned a ball to the ballpark. What are you doing out here, Huey? Jane hollered. I can't find my ticket, Huey said. Jane smacked her forehead. Unless someone hits a ball over this fence, we're not seeing nothing. It was the top of the third. This was his last place to find the ticket. He rushed to Mr. Prontera's shop. Huey saw the quickly scrawled sign, closed for the game. Now what was he going to do? A cheer went up. Was another Angels batter out? Did Balsina make a great play in center field? He had to know. Huey grabbed his hat and swatted it against his thigh in frustration. He stretched out his hands and yelled at the sky, Where is my ticket? He looked down. There was his ticket fluttering to the ground. It landed at his feet. Well, I'll be, he said. Now he remembered he had put it in his hat the day before for safekeeping. Huey picked the ticket up and ran across the street to the front gates. The crowd cheered. A little late, aren't you? The ticket taker said. You know they're playing for the pennant today, right, kid? Huey ran, bumping through the crowd. There they were, his rain ears. Huey moved through the aisles to the left field bleachers. Another cheer went up. Rigetti, the infielder, ran t toward first. Bascal was already crossing home plate. Rainiers are up three to nothing in the bottom of the fourth. A nearby hot dog hustler hollered, Hot dogs, get your hot dogs! A woman blew a piercing whistle. Huey loved it all. The manager, Hutch, watched from the steps looking over the field. Balsina stood in the dugout. Huey's friend Pat, the bat boy, waved. Huey, hello! Huey's teacher, Mrs. Severson, called from one row down. Great game, isn't it? Here, we have an extra seat cushion. He thanked her and sat down. You're late, his teammate Kenneth said, handing Huey a bag of peanuts. Huey took a deep breath. He'd made it and the Rainiers were ahead, but he knew better than to get too relaxed. Anything can happen in baseball. They filled out their scorecard and ate the, a hot dog through the fifth, shelled peanuts in the sixth, then sang take me out to the ball game and stretch during the seventh. It was still three to zero Rainiers. At the top of the eighth, the crack of a bat put them on the edge of their seats. It's a single! Looks like trouble, folks, announced Leo. Sometimes Huey wished Leo wasn't so honest. Huey, along with the rest of the crowd, cringed at yet another base hit. The Angels scored. It was 3-1. Hutch called for another pitcher, the dependable Bill Kennedy. But the ninth inning started off no better. Fireman Bill walked him, Leo said. The tines run out run at the plate. This does not look good, Rainier's fans. With one man on base, Kennedy struck out the next batter. Then he struck out another. Two outs. The Rainiers could still win. Or they could still lose. Not a fingernail left in the stadium, folks. Kennedy threw the pitch. A sharp grounder to third. Zer Zernia, the third baseman, dove for the ball and threw to Glenn at first. But, oh no! The ball bounced into the dirt, but Glenn stretched out and dug the ball out of the dirt and into his glove. The final out! Huey and the rest of the crowd leapt from their seats. 
Everyone threw cushions high into the air until they fell like snow from the sky. Huey saw Mr. Borkini, the baker, cheering, Mr. Yashimura nearby backslapping a fellow fishmonger, and the barber, Mr. Prontera, shaking hands with Mrs. Severson. From the radio, Leo yelled, Seattle has won the pennant! The end.